Today we're going to take a look back to the early days of alluvial digging in the Victorian goldfields and I'm going to share some of the terms used which were commonplace back then, but today almost totally out of use. You've all heard the term gold fever, and it was gold fever, yellow fever or gold mania which brought people here from all over the world in the 1850s. If you were new to the diggings, you were a new chum. If you were fresh off the boat, you were a lime juicer. A couple of diggers were called mates, a group was called a party, and a hatter worked alone. A fossicker picked over old workings, or sometimes picked over someone's current workings, like a bloody claim jumper. Not everyone wanted to put in the work. A shepherd held a claim doing as little work as possible while waiting for others around them to sink their shafts. If the hard work of others proved the gutter might be travelling through the shepherd's claim, only then did they begin to sink. If a rush was mostly made up of shepherds waiting on a few hard workers, it was called a dodger's rush. A storekeeper's rush was sparked by a rumour, deviously started by a storekeeper, who hoped to make profits from diggers who rushed the spot. Speaking of stores, we mustn't forget the famous coffee tent, which often disguised a sly grog shop, where alcohol was sold illegally on the sly. There you might be able to get yourself a famous Goldfields cocktail called the Blow My Skull Off, a noxious blend of rum, cayenne pepper, spirits of wine, coculus indicus and Turkish opium. So diggers sank their shaft, sometimes hitting false bottom and second bottom, and when they finally hit true bottom, if they were lucky, they'd hit the gutter. And if they were even more lucky, perhaps they'd dropped onto a jeweler's shop. The gutter is the deepest part of a riverbed, in many cases, a buried ancient riverbed which no longer flows. This is called a lead. The gutter wash was generally the best, but in many cases, the reef wash was just as rich. And I'm not talking about a quartz reef. See, alluvial miners called the bedrock the reef, and gold-bearing gravel sitting up on the reef, away from the gutter proper, was called reef wash. A claim which turned out to be no good was called a blank, a duffer, or a shicer. It was not unheard of for folks to sprinkle gold into shices and sell it to some poor party of diggers. This was called salting a claim. If you found a source of gold and kept a place a secret to work yourself, you were doing the trick on the quiet. If you were only making just enough to pay for your food and expenses, you were making tucker, and the ground was called tucker ground. Poor man's diggings could be easily and successfully worked without any capital. If you had capital and didn't want to work, you could be a furnisher, where you put in the money required for a party to work a claim in exchange for a share in the profits. When there was water about, diggers puddled their wash dirt in tubs or in horse-powered machines to break up and wash away the clay before putting the wash dirt through a sluice, cradle or pan. When there was no water to be had for miles around, they set aside the tub and cradle, took out their knives and went nuggeting in the pockets at the bottom of their shafts, while they piled their wash dirt for a rainy day. There was all kinds of gold. Gold dust, flower gold, heavy gold, shoddy gold, paint gold, spangle gold, nuggets, specimens, prospects, lumps, lobs, pockets and piles, to name a few. The gold won had to be guarded carefully and diggers often slept with their gold under their pillows at night. But that didn't stop the tent cutters. These sly crooks quietly cut holes in diggers' tents at night, reaching in to steal the hard-won gold from the slumbering victim. Early on, police dealt with folks like this by chaining them to a tree, later throwing them in the logs and at some rushes into the portable lockup. Permanent stone cells were built in many places and a few big colonial jails still stand throughout the region today. Among the diggers were ex-convicts, ticket of leave men and vandemonians of all descriptions. Police conducted the much despised digger hunts, looking to catch out anyone who was digging without a license. On sight of the traps, diggers raised a warning to others by shouting Joe, and quick as a flash, many men swiftly disappeared down their holes or off into the bush. The diggings were busy and filled with devices such as wind sails, windlasses, whips, whims, puddling machines and more. And there was another sort of puddling on the gold fields. When miners had to sink their shafts through wet and dangerous drifts, it was necessary to waterproof their shaft. They packed clay behind the timbers, they called this puddling, and the clay was puddling clay. Lining the shafts with wood was called slabbing, and removing the wood once the claim was worked out was called drawing slabs. 
When miners began sinking through basalt, they sank through layers which they called first rock, second rock, and so on, which alternated with layers of clay and drift. When miners began sinking through basalt, the formerly despised act of shepherding became quite necessary. The deeper the sinking, the more work, time, and capital was required, so sinking shafts anywhere on a whim was no longer an option. Claims ahead of the proven gutter waited for the claims behind them to find its course, and when they did, they were required to put up gutter flags on the surface to indicate its position. Flags were flown at the stores on the diggings as well, and at protests. The famous Eureka flag was first put up on Bakery Hill in Ballarat in 1854, but that is another story for another time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found some of these old terms as interesting as I do. If you'd like to learn more about the fascinating history of the Victorian goldfields, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.